first. I want you to feel that really loose wobble in your, in your hips. Okay, now stop that. Now take your shoulders and just pull them down, boom, and relax like that. Don't relax. Don't relax. Don't relax. Don't relax. Don't relax. When you punch, you want to kind of create that little wobble. That, that little wobbly feeling is sort of what launches your punch. And at the end of your punch, you want to get that little grip with that inflection. So you want wobble, like Heian and Taikyoku teach like basically linear motion, like these big, long steps in order to generate power. But as your technique becomes more sophisticated, you want to be able to generate the same amount of power in a much more abbreviated technique. And so you kind of use these little whips in your hip, they call it vibration. That's why this little wobble, that's why we talked about it, because it's really evident in Naihanchi or Tekikata. So when you're, when you're moving, like, it's like say you're doing Naihanchi Shodan, you don't just want to put your arm out, you kind of want to create this like, this little like whip, whip. So it kind of starts with that. And I, I kind of went through this little exercise in my mind, like if I numb my arms and I had no use of my arms, or just how would I make my hand go out? Well, I, I kind of have to create like a little whip with my body, and then my arm would go out. So I create a whip, and then I'd, and I'd stop, just like you stop your hand, and then the crack occurs at the end. So I kind of stop that motion, and my hand then catches up and whips. So yeah, that's basically how I would do it if I had no strength. That's probably what I want to do when I have strength, because that's the most efficient way. So then I take that little wobble and just put it under a little pressure, and then you get that that like feeling. And then, so when you practice the kata, don't feel like you have to be too mechanistically stiff when you do it. I think you're kind of missing the opportunity to basically feel your body. I would let your body move. Let energy, when you see it done right, you'll see energy going through your body and culminating someplace. Is that, you follow that? It's just like all of a sudden it became alive. There's so many iterations of what is the technique or what could the technique be. But, um, but this first movement certainly, one is that you're being grabbed from behind, like a bear hook style grab from behind. And what you're doing is you're creating like a wedge and I'm not really breaking his grab, but as I sink, I'm actually letting his arms slide over my arms. So it's like I'm creating this, that wedge effect. And that allows his arms now, he can still maintain the grab, I'm just sliding out from under the grab. So this feeling like that can certainly be that ap application. Then, I'm, then maybe this would be possible strike. And then this here could, could also be this feeling. So this this uh, this movement here, when you do the takedown, so so basically in the application, I'm being grabbed from behind. I make that shape, make that strike. I connect and I dig my hip. I dig my hip into that that motion. So that ability to put your half of your body on something that appears in a lot of kata, like hand sandan, jite, jion. That ability to kind of. Dig your whole half of your body as a unit cutting into that space. So when you do this, instead of using your shoulder, you want to feel this whole edge of your body with its center dropping the weight on the technique. You see, see what I'm saying? Again, you always think, always you're manifesting the ability to make your technique come from here as opposed to your extremity. So I'm not, that's why I'm not doing the kata like that. You know, I'm doing the kata with this feeling of everything kind of resonating out of my core. So when I do the takedown, it also is resonating out of my core. And this part here, when I do this, I'm going to cut a little bit. Like my arm is going to actually make that inflection. Similar to when you make, when you're doing a... <laughs> when you are my victim, you are always my victim. This, this cut, like in a... I'll do it easy, but cut in like... Jion is like that feeling. Like you're cutting, like taking a slice of cheese. So it's not just this clunking thing, but it inflects. So that inflection in your first two knuckles, you're putting it now on the, on the edge of your arm. Essentially, you can put it anywhere. I could put it on my shin. I could put it on my shin if I'm doing, say, hey, I'm gold on and I make a shibo kakeuke. I'm putting that feeling right there. You see what I'm saying? Awesome. So it's kind of where you put your mind. So this feeling here is like pull, drops, it opens this up. And then a grappling application.
rotation as well. That feeling. That feeling. And use, use your center to deliver. And I would definitely be here. I would not be like this. Like let your let your frame kind of represent that big feeling in your technique. So shoulders are down, kind of projecting out like that. And again, I'm using my center center to drive that out like that. Then I, I come across, and then I'm gonna the whole momentum of my center moving in that direction creates the bow of the boat. Okay, you got that feeling? So you don't want to just move your arm, but you want to attach, you want to attach that to this step and twist, snap, snap. Twist. Basically, you're going to like so and step. Or same, same. Step. Press. And then the, so basically, this motion, that's the throw. In my application, I put, instead of just the flat part of my arm coming between his thumb and fingertips, I'm going to turn and put that kind of bony edge. That focuses the energy of the pull a little better. So instead of all, all my pull being dispersed across the flat surface, it's now on this very smaller surface. So I'm just focusing that energy a little bit better. So if anyone just were to grab your hand, that would be the way to get free. And, and so they don't come with you, I can create a little point over here that I kind of rotate. As this goes back, my elbow goes in a bit. Boom, like that. But in this movement here, I'm hitting and coming in. Now when you put your weight on this, I would keep your arm kind of amorphic so that it's sort of soft when you drop your weight on it. <laughs> Such a great one. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're slowly working on a block bill act. <laughs> here, or same way here, not too stiff, kind of relaxed. But that idea of, of not really defining the line of energy, like if I push stiff, he can feel that. But if I get floppy, he's having a really hard time holding with that. Do you understand that idea? The analogy, a great analogy would be if you took a chain, like a link chain, and you held it up like this until it was still, and then you let it go, every link is falling on the same line, but every link is falling independently, right? And you cannot balance a chain, right? But you could balance a stick. You understand? So I would equate that the how you segment your body is everything is going along an intended line, but it's going on that intended line in its own unique way. And, the, and therefore, the uke cannot find the place to push back. They can't balance the stick in essence. You follow that idea? So even if you're just doing like, right across the other side. Like for instance, like say I just wanted to take him to the same spot on the other side. And maybe we can try this. If I go like this and I push, he can push back. So you're pushing back. But if I go like this and I actually create a kind of an, I actually do almost like a forearm pop, then I go that way. It's like he cannot figure where I'm moving next. So he can't anticipate where to push back. But as soon as I, as soon as I lock my body in, his body is too long locked behind it. So that's why, if I push straight, he's, he's good. If I create a little wave, he's not so good. All I gotta do is create a wave. Oh, you got potential. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna try, let's try this because maybe it'll help you understand this concept. There's the weak spot. So just cross hand grab. There's the weak spot. I'm gonna start by heading that direction. I'm gonna do almost like a forearm block first. I'm gonna start like this direction and then turn my forearm block into a downward block. And then there, you can't anticipate Ross and Tommy a second ago, and, and they were they were sitting over there kind of, ah, oh, and, and I could see they're getting it. They're getting that kind of flowing snap with your center driving it. Watch a Asai Sensei's cut out there. You know, he is not moving like this. You know, when he moves, his, his whole body is inflecting in whatever he's doing. You know, it's like he's running energy through his body, essentially. But to do that, your body has to be available. You have to, it has to be compliant. And, and I would say a big part of that compliancy is it has to be relaxed, but at the same time connected to your core. So my center, I always think of my center as like a big spindle. Like I have a spindle, and out from that spindle are cords that go into all my extremities. 
I am free to move on that spindle, but every time I anchor a technique, I crank down a little bit and tighten that cord to the spindle. When I make a punch in my stance, at the apex of my punch, I pull in a little bit, draw those cords into my center. So every time I'm hitting, that's why the shoulders down thing was important, because basically you're tightening this and pulling on those cords. You see it? And that, that cranking on that spindle and having your technique attached to your center is oscillating at every impulse of your gesture. I would even say within movement, your, 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 your technique comes into your center and then drives out from your center. Your technique comes in from your center, drives out from your center. Your technique comes into your center, drives out from your center. It's not out here floating around, it's being passed through a corridor. And the tighter you can make that, think of the analogy if you had a hose, and you put a, you have water coming out of the hose, a given amount of whatever, energy, but if you put a spray attachment on there, and you force it through a narrower space, now you can blow the leaves off your car. You follow? So that's the feeling, so when I step, Instead of just, like I watch people step with knife hand block, people step with knife hand block, I would say, you want to go through the spray attachment. God gave me this little well to sit that arm in there. And when I pull my back foot up, my lower body compresses, so now it's under some tension, wants to let go. My arms, under some tension, want to let go, so I'm putting them through the spray attachment. Then when I step, I, I'm blowing the leaves off my car. It's different than that, which we see, we almost think it looks right, because everyone does it like that. But it should com compress, snap. Compress, snap. Compress, snap. Compress, snap. 